The doorbell chimed, shattering my peaceful morning like a hammer through glass. I knew who it was before I even reached the door. Only one person had the audacity to show up unannounced at 9 a.m. on a Tuesday. Patricia, I said, forcing a smile as I opened the door. What a surprise. My mother-in-law breezed past me, her designer perfume leaving a cloying trail in her wake. Evelyn, dear, I was in the neighborhood and thought I'd pop by to see how you're settling into your new... role. The way she said roll made it sound like a dirty word. I bit back a retort, reminding myself that I'd chosen this. I'd left my career to be a full-time housewife, to support Brian's growing business. It was my decision, even if Patricia couldn't fathom why anyone would make such a choice. Coffee? I offered, already moving towards the kitchen. Oh, I suppose, Patricia said, her eyes scanning the living room with barely concealed judgment. If you have time... I know how busy you must be, keeping house. I gritted my teeth as I prepared the coffee. When I returned, Patricia was running a finger along the mantelpiece, inspecting it for dust. You know, Evelyn, she began, accepting the mug I offered. I couldn't help but notice the state of Brian's shirts when he visited last week. Perhaps I could show you a better way to iron them? Brian's shirts are fine, I said, my voice tight. He's never complained. Patricia clucked her tongue. Oh, he wouldn't, would he? Such a good boy, always so considerate. But a wife should anticipate her husband's needs, don't you think? I took a deep breath, counting to ten in my head. Patricia, I appreciate your concern, but Brian and I are doing just fine. We have our own way of doing things. I'm sure you do, she said, her tone dripping with condescension. I just worry, you see. It's such a big adjustment, going from a career woman to this. She gestured vaguely at the room. This is my choice, I said firmly, and Brian supports me. Patricia's eyes narrowed. Does he? I wonder if he truly understands what he's given up. A wife who contributes financially, who has her own life outside the home. It's a lot to ask a man to shoulder all that responsibility. My hands clenched around my coffee mug. Brian and I made this decision together. We're partners. Of course, dear, Patricia said, patting my knee patronizingly. I'm sure you believe that. Now why don't you show me what you've done with the guest room? I had some ideas about redecorating. I stood up abruptly. Actually, Patricia, I have plans this morning. Perhaps we could do this another time? She looked affronted. Plans. What could be more important than family? I have a life outside of this house, I said, moving towards the door. And right now, I need to get ready to live it. Patricia gathered her things, her lips pursed in disapproval. Well, I can see I'm not wanted. I'll just have to tell Brian how inhospitable you were when he gets home. As soon as she was gone, I sagged against the closed door, exhaustion washing over me. That's when I noticed it. My journal, sitting on the side table, slightly askew from where I'd left it. With trembling hands I picked it up, flipping to the most recent entry. There, in the margin, was a small pencil mark that hadn't been there before. My blood ran cold as realization dawned. Patricia had read my journal, my private thoughts about my struggles, adjusting to this new life, my fears and insecurities. She knew everything. In that moment, as anger and violation washed over me, I knew things would never be the same. Patricia had crossed a line, and I wasn't about to let her get away with it. This meant war. I stormed out of the house, my mind reeling from Patricia's invasion of privacy. The crisp morning air did little to cool my anger— as I marched down the sidewalk, no destination in mind. That's when I heard a friendly voice call out. Evelyn, what's got you in such a tizzy this fine morning? I turned to see June, my elderly neighbor, tending to her rose bushes, her weathered face creased with concern as she took in my flustered state. Oh, June, I sighed, feeling the fight drain out of me. It's my mother-in-law. She's... she's just impossible. June patted the bench beside her. Come, sit. Tell old June all about it. I hesitated for a moment, then relented. As I settled next to her, the words tumbled out, Patricia's surprise visit, her condescending remarks, and the shocking discovery that she'd read my private journal. June listened intently, her eyes narrowing as I recounted the morning's events. When I finished, she let out a low whistle. That woman's got some nerve, she said, shaking her head. Reminds me of my own mother-in-law, God rest her soul. She was a real piece of work, too. How did you handle it? I asked, desperate for any advice. 
June chuckled. Not well at first, but I learned something important over the years. You've got to set boundaries, and you've got to stick to them. Boundaries? The concept seemed foreign when it came to Patricia. Absolutely, June nodded firmly. You need to have a frank conversation with her. Let her know in no uncertain terms that her behavior is unacceptable. The thought of confronting Patricia made my stomach churn. I don't know if I can do that, June. She's Brian's mother, and I don't want to cause problems in the family. June's eyes softened. Honey, she's the one causing problems. You have every right to protect your home and your peace of mind. As we talked, I felt a weight lifting from my shoulders. June's wisdom, born from years of experience, gave me strength I didn't know I had. You know, June said, a mischievous glint in her eye, my herald always said the best defense is a good offense. Maybe it's time you took the fight to Patricia. I raised an eyebrow. What do you mean? Well, June leaned in conspiratorially. You could always give her a taste of her own medicine, show up at her house unannounced, offer some unsolicited advice about her housekeeping. We both burst into laughter at the thought. As our giggles subsided, I felt a newfound resolve settling over me. You're right, June, I said, straightening my shoulders. I need to stand up for myself. I can't let Patricia walk all over me anymore. June squeezed my hand. That's the spirit, dear. Remember, you're not just standing up for yourself. You're standing up for your marriage, for your future family. As I walked home, buoyed by June's support, I began formulating a plan. I'd confront Patricia, set clear boundaries, and make it abundantly clear that her behavior wouldn't be tolerated any longer. But when I reached my front door, I froze. There, taped to the wood, was a note in Patricia's elegant script. Evelyn, I've taken the liberty of rearranging your linen closet. You'll find it's much more efficient now. We'll discuss your homemaking skills further at Sunday dinner. Patricia. My hands shook as I ripped the note from the door. How dare she enter my home without permission? Again. In that moment, all my carefully laid, laid plans evaporated. This wasn't just about setting boundaries anymore. This was war. I stormed into the house, grabbed my phone, and dialed Brian's number. As it rang, I paced the living room, my free hand clenched into a fist. Hello? Brian's voice came through, tinged with concern. He must have sensed my mood even through the phone. Brian, I said, my voice trembling with barely contained fury. We need to talk about your mother. Now. The tension in the room was palpable as I faced Patricia across the dining table. Brian sat beside me, his presence a comforting anchor in the storm that was about to break. Patricia, I began, my voice steadier than I felt. We need to talk about boundaries. Her eyebrows arched. Boundaries? I'm not sure I understand, dear. I took a deep breath. You've been overstepping, entering our home without permission, rearranging our things, and— I paused, stealing myself, reading my private journal. Patricia's face flushed, but she didn't deny it. I was only trying to help. As a mother, I have a right to ensure my son's home is well managed. No, you don't, Brian interjected, his voice firm. Mom, Evelyn and I are adults. We don't need your supervision. Patricia's eyes widened, shock evident on her face. Brian— Surely you can't mean that. I've always had your best interests at heart. Your intentions don't justify your actions, I said. We're setting clear boundaries now. No more unannounced visits, no more helping without our permission, and absolutely no invading our privacy. Patricia's shock morphed into indignation. This is preposterous. I've done nothing but try to guide you both. Evelyn, you're the one causing a rift in this family with your modern notions and inability to keep a proper home. I felt Brian tense beside me, but I squeezed his hand, silently asking him to let me handle this. Patricia, this isn't about my homemaking skills or your guidance. It's about respect. We're asking you to respect our autonomy as a couple. For a moment, Patricia was silent, her eyes darting between Brian and me. Then her face hardened. I see. I see. If that's how you feel, perhaps it's best if I limit my involvement in your lives. Mom— Brian started, but Patricia cut him off with a wave of her hand. No, no. I understand perfectly. You've made your choice clear. She stood, gathering her purse. But mark my words, Evelyn. This family needs stability, tradition. The only way you'll ever truly be part of it is if you give Brian a child, a son, preferably. Then maybe you'll understand the importance of family. Her words hit me like a slap. I stood up, anger coursing through me. How dare you! 
but Patricia was already heading for the door. She paused at the threshold, turning back with a vindictive smile. I'll be waiting for that announcement. Until then, enjoy your independence. The door slammed behind her, leaving a ringing silence in its wake. Brian wrapped his arms around me as I sagged against him. I'm so sorry, Evelyn. I had no idea she'd react like that. I shook my head, fighting back tears. It's not your fault, but Brian, what she said about having a child. He pulled back, looking into my eyes. Hey, don't let her get to you. We'll have children when we're ready, not because my mother demands it. I nodded, but Patricia's words had planted a seed of doubt. What if she was right? What if I could never truly be part of this family without producing an heir? As if reading my thoughts, Brian cupped my face in his hands. You are my family, Evelyn. You're all I need. I managed a weak smile, but inside, my mind was racing. Despite our victory in setting boundaries, I couldn't shake the feeling that this was far from over. Patricia's parting words echoed in my head, a sinister prophecy that threatened to overshadow our future. That night, as Brian slept peacefully beside me, I stared at the ceiling, my hand resting on my flat stomach. The thought that had been niggling at the back of my mind all evening finally crystallized into a startling realization. I was late, very late. My heart raced as I contemplated the possibility. Could I be pregnant? And if I was, how would this change things with Patricia? Would it bring peace to our family, or would it only give her more ammunition to interfere in our lives? As dawn broke, I made a decision. I would find out for sure, but I wouldn't tell Brian. Not yet. This was my secret to keep, at least until I figured out what it meant for our future. The pregnancy test trembled in my hands, two pink lines staring back at me. I was right. I was pregnant. A whirlwind of emotions swept through me. Joy, fear, excitement, and dread all tangled together in a complicated knot. I took a deep breath, steadying myself against the bathroom sink. This was what we wanted, wasn't it? A family of our own. But Patricia's words echoed in my mind, casting a shadow over what should have been a moment of pure happiness. When I told Brian that evening, his face lit up with unbridled joy. He swept me into his arms, spinning me around our kitchen. We're going to be parents, he exclaimed, his eyes shining with tears. I laughed, letting his excitement wash over me, pushing my worries aside for the moment. Yes, we are. As the weeks passed, my belly grew, and so did Patricia's interference. It started small. A book on proper prenatal care left on our doorstep, unsolicited advice about my diet slipped into conversation during Sunday dinners, but it quickly escalated. One afternoon, I came home to find Patricia in our nursery, directing a team of painters. What's going on here? I demanded, my hands instinctively cradling my swollen belly. Patricia turned, a serene smile on her face. Oh, Evelyn, I'm just helping you get the nursery ready. Blue is the perfect color for a boy's room, don't you think? I felt the blood drain from my face. We don't know the gender yet, Patricia. And even if we did, we didn't ask for your help. Her smile faltered. But surely you want a boy? To carry on the family name? We want a healthy baby, I said firmly. Boy or girl? Patricia's eyes narrowed. You're being naive, Evelyn. You're a son is what this family needs. Brian needs an heir. I opened my mouth to argue, but a sharp pain in my abdomen made me gasp. Patricia was at my side in an instant, her face a mask of concern. Are you all right? Should I call the doctor? I waved her off, taking deep breaths until the pain subsided. I'm fine. It's just stress. Patricia's expression softened. You see? This is why you need my help. You're clearly overwhelmed. I straightened up, fixing her with a hard stare. What I need is for you to respect our boundaries. Please leave, Patricia. Now. For a moment, I thought she might argue, but she simply pursed her lips and gathered her things. As she passed me, she paused. I'm only trying to help, Evelyn. One day, you'll understand. After she left, I sank onto the couch, my hands shaking. The stress of dealing with Patricia was taking its toll, and I knew it wasn't good for the baby. That night, I confided in Brian about my concerns. He listened, his face growing more troubled with each word. I had no idea it had gotten this bad, he said, running a hand through his hair. I'll talk to her, make her understand. No, I interrupted. I don't think that's enough anymore, Brian. Your mother, she's not going to change and I can't keep dealing with this stress. It's not good for me or the baby. Brian took my hands in his. What are you saying? I took a deep breath, stealing myself for what I was about to propose. I think, 
I think I should go stay with my mother for the rest of the pregnancy. His eyes widened in shock. Evelyn, no, this is our home, our family. We can't let my mother drive you away. It's not about letting her win, I explained. It's about doing what's best for our child. I need peace, Brian. I need to be able to enjoy this pregnancy without constantly looking over my shoulder. Brian was quiet for a long moment, his internal struggle visible on his face. Finally, he nodded slowly. If that's what you need, then that's what we'll do. But Evelyn, promise me this is temporary. Promise me you'll come back. I leaned in, pressing my forehead to his. I promise. This is our home, our family. I'm just taking a step back to protect it. As we sat there, holding each other, I felt a mix of relief and sadness wash over me. This wasn't how I imagined my pregnancy would be, but I knew in my heart it was the right decision. For now, at least, I would find sanctuary away from Patricia's overbearing presence. But a nagging voice in the back of my mind wondered, would this really solve our problems or just delay the inevitable confrontation? The gentle hum of my mother's sewing machine filled the quiet afternoon as I sat by the window, absently rubbing my swollen belly. It had been three weeks since I'd moved in with her, and the peace I'd found here was a balm to my frayed nerves. My phone buzzed, interrupting my reverie. Another message from Patricia. I hesitated before opening it, bracing myself for what I might find. Evelyn, how could you abandon your home like this? Brian needs you. Are you so selfish that you'd put your own comfort above your family's needs? I closed my eyes, taking a deep breath to calm the anger rising within me. This wasn't the first message of its kind, and I doubted it would be the last. Everything okay, honey? My mother asked, pausing her work. I forced a smile. Just Patricia again. Nothing I can't handle. But as the days passed, Patricia's messages became more frequent and more vicious. Each one chipped away at my resolve, planting seeds of doubt in my mind. A real wife would be by her husband's side. I always knew you weren't cut out for this family. That child deserves better than a mother who runs away from her responsibilities. One evening, as I sat on the porch swing, my phone buzzed again. This time it was Brian. Hey, love. How are you feeling? Mom's been asking about you. She seems pretty upset that you're not here. Maybe we should reconsider this arrangement. My heart sank. Even here, hundreds of miles away, Patricia's influence was seeping into our lives, manipulating Brian's thoughts. I was about to respond when another message from Patricia came through. This one was different. Attached was a photo of our nursery, completely redecorated in garish shades of blue and green. Since you're not here to prepare for my grandson, I took the liberty of doing it myself. I hope you appreciate all I'm doing for this family in your absence. Something inside me snapped. The constant barrage of guilt-tripping messages, the manipulation of Brian, and now this blatant disregard for our wishes. It was too much. With shaking hands, I pulled up Patricia's contact information. My finger hovered over the block button as a war raged within me. Was this too drastic? Would it cause irreparable damage to our family? But then I felt a strong kick from my baby, as if urging me on. In that moment, clarity washed over me. This wasn't just about me anymore. I had to protect my child from Patricia's toxic influence. I pressed block. A wave of relief washed over me, followed quickly by a pang of guilt. I dialed Brian's number, knowing I owed him an explanation. Evelyn, is everything okay? His voice was laced with concern. Brian, I... I just blocked your mother's number, I said, my voice trembling slightly. There was a long pause on the other end. Oh, he finally said. I see. I'm sorry, but I had to. The constant messages, the guilt tripping, the redecorating of the nursery, without our permission, it's too much. I need to focus on our baby now, not on managing your mother's feelings. I heard Brian sigh heavily. I understand. I'm sorry it came to this. I should have done more to shield you from her. It's not your fault, I assured him. But Brian, we need to talk about what happens after the baby is born. I can't, I won't, bring our child into an environment where Patricia feels she can overstep our boundaries at will. You're right, Brian said, his voice firm. When you come home, things will be different. I promise. As we talked, making plans for our return and discussing how to handle Patricia going forward, I felt a weight lift from my shoulders. For the first time in months, I felt truly hopeful about our future. That night, as I lay in bed, 
my hands resting protectively over my belly, I made a silent vow to my unborn child. No matter what challenges lay ahead, I would always put their well-being first. Patricia might be family by marriage, but this little one was flesh of my flesh, and I would move heaven and earth to give them the peaceful, loving home they deserved. The first cry of my newborn daughter filled the delivery room, and in that moment all the pain and exhaustion melted away. I looked up at Brian, tears streaming down his face as he cut the umbilical cord. Our little Emily had arrived, perfect and beautiful. As I cradled her in my arms, a sense of peace washed over me. The struggles with Patricia seemed a distant memory. This was our new beginning. Three days later, we were ready to go home. As Brian pulled into our driveway, I felt a mix of excitement and apprehension. Home, our sanctuary, but also the battleground where we'd faced so many conflicts with Patricia. Ready? Brian asked, squeezing my hand. I nodded, clutching Emily close to my chest as we walked to the front door. The moment we stepped inside, I knew something was wrong. The air felt different, stale somehow. Brian, I whispered, did you leave any windows open? He shook his head, his brow furrowing as he looked around. That's when I noticed it, the empty spaces where my things used to be. My grandmother's antique vase, gone from the mantel. The painting we'd bought on our honeymoon, missing from the wall. What the hell? Brian muttered, moving quickly through the house. I followed him, my heart pounding. As we entered our bedroom, I gasped. My jewelry box was gone, along with the vintage dresser it had sat on. Even my clothes were missing from the closet. This can't be happening, I said, my voice trembling. We were robbed? Brian's face had turned ashen. No, he said quietly. Look. He pointed to a note on the bed. With shaking hands, I picked it up, recognizing the elegant script immediately. Evelyn and Brian, I've taken the liberty of clearing out some of the clutter in your home. You'll find it's much more suitable for raising a child now. I've sold the unnecessary items. Consider it a lesson in responsibility and prioritizing what truly matters in life. I look forward to meeting my grandchild, love, Patricia. The paper crumpled in my fist as a wave of fury washed over me. She sold my things? She broke into our home and sold my possessions? Brian was already on the phone, pacing the room. Mom, what have you done? No, you had no right. This is theft, Mom. Do you understand that? As he argued with Patricia, I sank onto the bed, clutching Emily to my chest. She began to fuss, sensing my distress. I tried to soothe her, but my own emotions were spiraling out of control. This was supposed to be our homecoming, our fresh start. Instead, Patricia had violated our space, our trust in the most egregious way possible. Brian ended the call, his face a mask of anger and disbelief. She says she did it for us, to teach us about responsibility. She won't tell me where she sold the items. I stood up, my body shaking with rage. This ends now, Brian. I won't let her terrorize us anymore. I won't let her anywhere near Emily. Evelyn. No, I cut him off. No more excuses, no more second chances. We need to confront her, face to face, and this time there will be consequences. Brian nodded slowly, his jaw set. You're right, this has gone too far. We'll go to her house right now. As we prepared to leave, I looked down at Emily, peacefully asleep in her carrier. My resolve strengthened. This wasn't just about me anymore. It was about protecting our daughter, our family. We drove to Patricia's house in tense silence. As we pulled up, I saw her peering out the window, a smug smile on her face. She thought she'd won, that we'd come crawling back, grateful for her interference. How wrong she was. I stepped out of the car, Emily in one arm, my other hand clenched in a fist. This was it. The moment of reckoning. As we approached the front door, I knew that whatever happened next would change our family forever. And I was ready for it. The door swung open and there stood Patricia, her face a mask of false concern. Oh, you're here. I was so worried when you didn't call. Come in, come in, let me see my granddaughter. I clutched Emily tighter to my chest, my body tensing. Not so fast, Patricia. We need to talk about what you've done. Her smile faltered for a moment before returning, brittle and forced. What I've done? I've only been helping, dear. You'll see. Helping? Brian's voice was low and dangerous. You call breaking into our home and selling our possessions helping? Patricia's eyes widened in feigned innocence. Breaking in? Don't be ridiculous, Brian. I have a key, and I was merely decluttering for the baby's sake. I felt my anger rising, threatening to boil over. 
Those weren't your things to declutter, Patricia. You had no right. I had every right, she snapped, her facade cracking. I'm family. I'm trying to teach you responsibility to show you what really matters. You should be thanking me. Brian stepped forward, placing himself between Patricia and me. Mom, what you did was illegal. It was a violation of our privacy and our trust. We want our things back. Now. Patricia's face hardened. I'm afraid that's not possible. I've already sold most of it. The room seemed to spin around me. All those precious memories, gone. I felt tears pricking at my eyes, but I blinked them back. I wouldn't give her the satisfaction of seeing me cry. Then you'll pay us back. I said, my voice steadier than I felt. Every penny. Patricia laughed, a harsh, bitter sound. With what money? Everything I had went into raising Brian, into supporting this family. You owe me, if anything. Brian's shoulders tensed. No, Mom, we don't owe you anything. Not anymore. The silence that followed was deafening. Patricia's eyes darted between us, realization slowly dawning on her face. What are you saying? She whispered. Brian took a deep breath. We're saying that this ends now. You're no longer welcome in our home. You're no longer a part of our lives. Patricia stumbled back as if she'd been struck. You can't mean that. I'm your mother. A mother respects boundaries, I said. A mother supports her children, not terrorizes them. You've shown us that you can't be trusted, Patricia. We won't let you hurt our family anymore. Tears welled up in Patricia's eyes, but I steeled myself against them. How many times had she used those tears to manipulate us? Brian she pleaded, reaching for her son. You can't do this. I'm all alone. I need you. For a moment, I saw Brian waver. This was his mother, after all, the woman who had raised him. But then he looked at me, at Emily sleeping peacefully in my arms, and his resolve hardened. No, Mom, you need help, but not from us. Not anymore. We're leaving now, and I don't want you to contact us again. Patricia's face contorted with rage. You ungrateful children, after everything I've done for you— You'll regret this, mark my words. As we turned to leave, Patricia lunged forward, her hands outstretched towards Emily. If you're going to abandon me, at least let me hold my granddaughter one last time. I reacted instinctively, twisting away to shield Emily. In the process, I lost my balance, stumbling backwards. Time seemed to slow as I felt myself falling. Emily clutched tightly to my chest. Brian's strong arms caught me just before I hit the ground. Emily woke with a startled cry, and the sound seemed to snap Patricia out of her frenzy. She stood there, hands still outstretched, horror dawning on her face as she realized what she'd almost done. "'Get out!' Brian growled, his voice trembling with barely contained fury. "'Get out now, or I swear I'll call the police.' As we hurried to our car, Emily's cries piercing the night air, I looked back one last time. Patricia stood in the doorway, a small, broken figure silhouetted against the light. In that moment, I felt no triumph, no satisfaction, only a deep, aching sadness for what could have been and the knowledge that our lives would never be the same again. Six months passed without a word from Patricia. Brian and I focused on our new life with Emily, cherishing every moment of parenthood. The peace we'd found was healing, but the shadow of Patricia's actions still lingered. Then on a crisp autumn morning, a letter arrived. I recognized the handwriting immediately my heart racing as I opened it. Dear Evelyn and Brian, I hope this letter finds you well. I'm writing to you from a place of deep reflection and regret. The past months have been difficult. I've lost my job, my home, and most importantly my family. I realize now the gravity of my actions and the pain I've caused. I'm not asking for forgiveness. I know I don't deserve it. But I want you to know that I truly believed I was acting in your best interests. I see now how wrong I was. If you're willing, I'd like to meet, to apologize in person and to make amends, if possible. With love and remorse, Patricia. I showed the letter to Brian, watching his face as he read. What do you think? I asked softly. He sighed, running a hand through his hair. I don't know, Evelyn. Part of me wants to believe her, but after everything. I nodded, understanding his hesitation. Maybe we should meet her, hear her out at least. A week later we sat in a neutral coffee shop, Emily sleeping peacefully in her stroller. When Patricia walked in, I barely recognized her. Gone was the imperious woman who had terrorized our lives. In her place was someone who looked small, tired, and deeply sad. "'Thank you for agreeing to see me,' she said, her voice trembling slightly as she sat down. Brian nodded stiffly. 
You said you wanted to apologize. Patricia took a deep breath. Yes, I, I'm so sorry, for everything. I see now how my actions were not just misguided, but cruel and destructive. I was so caught up in my own ideas of what was best that I couldn't see the damage I was causing. She turned to me, tears in her eyes. Evelyn, I treated you abominably. I was jealous of your relationship with Brian, threatened by the changes in his life. Instead of supporting you both, I tried to control everything. I'm truly, deeply sorry. I felt a lump forming in my throat. Patricia, you hurt us deeply. You violated our trust, our home, our privacy. How can we ever trust you again? She nodded, wiping away a tear. I know. I don't expect you to trust me. I don't even expect you to forgive me. I just... I hope that maybe someday we can find a way to have some kind of relationship. For Emily's sake, if nothing else. Brian leaned forward, his face serious. Mom, we appreciate your apology. But you need to understand. Things can never go back to how they were. If we decide to allow you back into our lives, it will be on our terms with clear boundaries that you must respect. Patricia nodded eagerly. Of course, anything. I, I've been seeing a therapist, trying to understand why I acted the way I did. I want to be better, for all of you. As we talked, I felt a weight lifting from my shoulders. The anger and resentment I'd been carrying began to dissipate, replaced by a cautious hope. We didn't forgive Patricia that day. Trust, once broken, takes time to rebuild. But we took the first steps towards healing. We agreed to occasional, supervised visits with Emily. Patricia would continue her therapy, and we would take things slowly, one day at a time. As we left the coffee shop, Brian squeezed my hand. Are you okay? he asked. I looked down at Emily, still sleeping peacefully, unaware of the complex emotions swirling around her. Then I looked at Brian, the man who had stood by me through it all. You know what? I think I am, I said, smiling. We've been through so much, but we've come out stronger. Whatever happens with your mother, I know we can handle it together. Brian pulled me close, kissing the top of my head. Together, he agreed. As we walked home, I felt a sense of peace settle over me. The road ahead wouldn't be easy, but we had each other. We had our beautiful daughter, and we had the strength that comes from overcoming adversity together. In the end, that was all that mattered. We were a family, bound not just by blood, but by love, respect, and the shared experience of fighting for what truly matters. And no matter what challenges lay ahead, I knew we would face them united, stronger than ever before.